Hello and welcome to the Black Death. Today I will be going through the first steps that you will be taking in the game The Black Death. You first load up the game, you will be greeted by this start screen with play, settings, quit, and down here also modify, as well as various social media down here. If you want to start the game, obviously you can play, uh, press play. If you want to change the look of your character, you can go into the modify button, which is currently looking bugged for me, unfortunately, but down there you could have changed gender and appearance. Anyway, let's just hop straight into it. When you first press the button play, you will get to an area known as the homestead. And this is a bit of a, what I would call, starter area or tutorial island. If you press escape, you can see down here you have a ping of zero and the server should be your own name. This means that you are in your homestead, which is an area where only you are inside. So it's basically like a local server and nobody else can come on there and just harm you, which means it's like your own respite, your own safe zone, where you can start learning the game or where you can go back to when you feel fed up of getting killed by other people. If you choose, however, uh, to play along with some other people, there is an option to press F1 to invite friends to your session. Anyway, to get started in the game, um, we can look at the UI. Up at the right top hand corner, we have uh, a so called quest, let's call it log, um, where you have certain steps you need to do to complete the quest, and each time you get XP, which will help you to level up. In the middle of the screen, you have a compass, which will help you navigate around the place. In the bottom left, you have the chat which can be accessed by pressing enter. Next to that, you have a hotbar uh, with a few other resources indicated. So first of all, you have the hotbar from one to six. Number one is fists. Number two to six can be anything you want, which can be equipped by going into the inventory and just simply dragging and dropping something in there. If you want to use the item in that slot, for instance, to drink something, all you have to do is tap the button, which you mapped it to. So for two, I can drink something. Then if I press three, I can take out the ax that I equipped. Next, uh, you can see at the top left, you can see the uh, small number with a coin right next to it. That is the amount of money you have, the gold which starts off at zero. On the right side, you have a bit of a uh, weight indicator. So on the left number is the current weight and the right number is the maximum weight that you can have in your inventory. Each item has a certain weight. In the middle of the two, you will see a number inside of a bit of a sun. That is the days you have survived. For each day that you survive, you will get an uh, amount of gold and experience, and each day is just a certain amount of time spent on the server. It's the day-night cycle is the same for everybody. On the very left, you see uh, also a number next to the fists, which is renown. Um, currently, I have two eight seven. And Renown is necessary for you to upgrade your uh, claims or your land claims and also necessary for you to switch your professions, which can be done either on the modify button in the main menu or by pressing on the portrait uh, in your inventory right next to your name. When you start, you're a beggar, you'll have zero money, you'll be on day one, you'll have nothing at all. That's pretty much it, and also no renown. All right, so then you can start exploring the area right here, and if you're like 
I don't want to do that. I want to go straight to an actual server, play with other people, or maybe have a friend already on. Then what you can do is go to the ferryman here, and he can take you to Mercia. So uh, you can then press on the switch button to choose which server you want to go to, and then the travel button to actually get there. The ferryman can also get you to the attack on the north, which is a special event which I can talk about later, the arena where you can practice your fighting skills, and some other areas to come soon. You can also use the ferryman to get back to your homestead once you are on an actual server. Alright, now that those introductions of the UI have been done, what can you actually do once you've started the game? In the homestead area, which is just a basic area, you'll find most of the basic starting materials like cotton, chamomile, sticks, kindling, stone, uh, stone uh, small stones, uh, you can also find poppies, you can find berries, and you can find water, or bad water, as well as mushrooms, wild mushrooms. For anything better than that, like iron, gold, clay, and stuff like that, you will have to go to the main server. So this is just for the beginning, to get your, your bearings, get a little bit of money, a uh, little bit of money, some XP and the like. So, what do you want to do first? Well, what you basically want to be doing is just running around and picking up everything there is. Because if you look to the bottom right, every time that I pick something up, I'm getting XP. And that is important for you to level up, uh, gain levels, and also some points for uh, increasing skills. Some of these things that you will be picking up, you will be able to process, and other things you won't. So, as I said, first of all, you just want to go around and pick up anything you can. All right, let's assume that you've picked up a few things, your inventory is pretty full, and you want to start turning that into money. As you can see, many things that you pick up, like cotton seeds, sticks, stone, they don't have a value in themselves. Instead, you will have to turn them into something valuable first if you want to sell them. So, for instance, you could turn sticks into stick clubs, which will get you XP, and uh, they will be worth money. You could also turn them into uh, wattle fences or wattle uh, gatehouses to also turn them into money. In the cotton, you can turn into primitive vests or primitive gloves. So first of all, that you have a little bit of protection, or if you've already got that, you can turn it into uh, money by selling it. Wild berries and mushrooms can be turned into food at a campfire, which you need to build. Uh, in this menu, under the housing, right there, which you'd need small rock, kindling, and sticks. Uh, the recipe for berry jam is three berries, one kindling, and one water, which can be purified from dirty water, which can be found at like uh, things that look a little bit like a well, but a very primitive well. So just some stones and a small bucket lying around it. Then you can make mushroom soup from two wild mushrooms, one kindling, and one water also. This will also help you to stay uh, with food and water, which is the third bar on the right. You have uh, on the left the water droplet, which is the amount of water you have. The one to the right, the apple, is the amount of food you have. And the bar below it is the amount of health you have with the number at the bottom indicating whether you are gaining health, so whether you are healing, or whether you are losing health by, for instance, eating wild mushrooms. Alright, once you have 
crafted up yourself some things to sell or you just want to sell things like camera which have a worth of itself in the beginning you can go into the town and sell it at one of the shopkeepers by either simply drag and dropping it or by uh, right clicking it pressing sell all or splitting the stack first all right uh, additionally one thing you will have to keep in mind is to process foods uh, and to place that campfire you'll need a place to build it and currently it seems to me that the only way to do that is to go over to this burnt village looking thing and to buy your first lot of land you simply click on the flag then you pay a little bit of money and then you can get it uh, after that you can here toggle whether you can build or the guild can build and then here you can also upgrade the uh, settlement only after you've actually claimed this uh, piece of land you can actually build the campfire on it all right after you've done some selling and you've done some uh, crafting and the like you could probably have a level up also after you've done some uh, quests as well then you want to probably level up and in order to level up you have to press on this or click on this button to the right of your name and then you can invest into either attributes or skills um, as you can see attributes change for instance your carry capacity which uh, is by changing the amount of strength you have or you can increase the amount of health you have damage or how much uh, hunger or thirst uh, how much it changes and skills on the right here um, unlock new building recipes and also professions so each time you level up um, it costs you a certain amount of points in the beginning that would be one point and it will gradually increase for skills until four points and it will increase for as well or i think even more later on for attributes as well additionally skills as i said are important for professions so each time you reach level five in a certain profession a uh, skill that profession will be unlocked with a bonus being the knight which is unlocked if as uh, when you have level five in all skills and the royalty which is uh, unlocked once you have level 10 in all skills each of the professions as i will show you has its own bonus or reason to get it so for instance the beggar um, is able to beg people for gold but not npcs just other players which uh, can then give him gold Additionally, he has bonus attributes, hunger and thirst, which means you will consume food and water slower. Then there is the doctor, which is able to dissect fresh bodies for XP and items and some more passive uh, attributes as well. Currently, as far as I know, the uh, dissection does not work, so it is uh, currently, unfortunately, a waste to get it. Then there is the artisan, who can uh, build his own uh, merchant NPC. Uh, and stock him, set his own prices so that he can sell things there. There is the cook uh, who gets increased yield from crafting some of the food items, not all of them. The passive who gets increased yield from gathering resources. That means, for instance, uh, when you gather wood with an axe and you get instead of one wood, you get two wood. However, if you get an upgraded axe, which would get you, let's say, two wood, you'd only get three wood, not four wood. The smith reduces the total repair cost. Um, the repair cost, uh, which it shows you, will still be the same. However, the amount it actually consumes will be less. The mason builds faster. 
the hunter doubles damage to animals and increases the yield from animals, so sometimes you'll get two loot bags instead of one. The bandit is friendly with bandits and hostile guards, sometimes it works better than other time, but it means that things which have the name bandit in its name won't actually attack you, which for the beginning when you're not so skilled in fighting yet might actually seem nice. The knight gains a bounty of gold from every infected person you kill, which we'll get to later. And then royalty uh, gets increased nobility gain, uh, basically double the renown for every kill. Additionally, it is also able to access the royalty table or royal crafting table, which uh, can make three unique items. As you can see, day 3 has come and I've gotten 95 gold and 74 XP. Alright, after you've done some selling, you've done some leveling up, and uh, you might decide then to either go on to the server, or you might say you want to continue staying on the server, and uh, not on the server, on the homestead, so your personal server, and do some more fighting or some actual fighting if you've not done it before. The fighting system is pretty intuitive. You have right click to guard or to uh, yeah, to guard. Um, in the beginning, you can only do that with your fists, obviously, and you can see a small meter being drained in the middle. That's basically your fighting stamina. So uh, bracing. Or guarding will cost stamina. Stopping the guard will stop draining stamina, and I will get stamina back. Uh, right, uh, left clicking will punch, and holding left click will hold the punch and also charge it. As you can see, that is draining some more stamina. Additionally, depending on what mouse button you are pressing, uh, sorry, what uh, what direction you are moving in will change the direction of your swing. Uh, so you could do that with WASD as you are tapping the left mouse button. And that is pretty much all there is to the combat system. Weapons can also be crafted in the weapons tab here, so for instance from sticks you can craft a stick club, which is slightly better than using your fists. Do however keep in mind that weapons do break after a while, and simple weapons like sticks break quite easily. Apart from that, especially once you have unlocked a profession, it is definitely time to go onto a live server, especially since one of the things that you will want to be doing very quickly is making yourself a bag. A small bag is probably the best, which can be made from animal pelt and thread. Thread can be made from cotton and animal pelt can be acquired at a merchant most of the time, a uh, tailor. One more thing that I want to mention before I leave you is um, how to actually get ores, including stone, which has changed since uh, one of the last updates, and that is now in caves instead of just spawning randomly all over the place. As you can see, caves throughout Mercia, such as this one, provide valuable resources such as ore, but also include many dangers such as bandits and traps so tread carefully and carry a big sword. In the homestead area, of course, uh, those enemies won't be too dangerous yet. You can probably fight them off with your hands. And as you can see, you have ore nodes or stone ore. There's no iron, gold or silver in the homestead area though. As you can see, there is a bandit, which I can try to attack. One more thing 
if you do not actually like this first person, you can switch by pressing the Y button. And you can then change into third person mode. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and this guide has helped you even though it is quite long and I hope to see you in the next video if you've enjoyed it or have found anything useful. Of course, if you have any questions about the game or just in general or you have any ideas, do let me know in the comments and I will try to address your comments, questions and ideas as fast as I can. Anyway, Peace.